What's going on YouTube? This is Jabber Tech, and today we're doing a friendly comparison between two great smartwatches. I'm talking about the Galaxy Watch 3, and I'm talking about Mobvoi's TicWatch Pro 3. Both of these are brand new for 2020. Both of these are top of the line when it comes to their respective companies' lineup in the wearable market. Now, the Mobvoi TicWatch Pro 3 here is sporting the latest Wear 4100 processor, which brings a lot of tweaks, which brings a lot of performance tweaks from last year's 3100. And the Galaxy Watch 3 is running Samsung's old Exynos 9110 processor. Both of these are very similar in many ways, and both of these couldn't be any different. But let's just go ahead, talk about some key points between these two watches, and see which one might be best for you. Let's talk about the styling of both of these watches because I think the styling is very nice on both of them. Both companies did a really nice job designing a smartwatch. Now the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 is a watch that I kind of customized a little bit. I already put on this ringy style bezel just to kind of change up the look and also to protect the watch a little bit more. Otherwise it's an all black look and they also have a two-tone kind of deal if you like the two-tone type of look. That'll be silver with the black but I actually like the black and the silver so I switched this up a little bit. And both of these watches do offer 22 millimeter style bands and so I did swap them out. I just like swapping out watch bands so that's what I did right off the bat. But in terms of styling and in terms of build quality I think Samsung is the winner here. No one really comes close to build quality when it comes to Samsung. They just know how to design and build some really premium devices and at $429 this is no exception the Galaxy Watch 3 is a very well built tank I'm gonna call this a tank because it, it really feels like it could take an abuse it really feels like you could do anything with this watch and it would still survive. Now the Mobvoi TicWatch Pro 3 here is also a nicely designed watch I like the styling of it it's super super thin it's actually a lot thinner than the Galaxy Watch if we do a little comparison between these two you can see the thickness the TicWatch 3 definitely is a little bit thinner, but I like the design of Mobvoi's TicWatch Pro 3. It is a glossy black with a matte black. You only have one option, and this is what you get. So again, I like the styling. Now, I don't think this is built cheaply at all. I think they did a very nice job with their stainless steel and plastic build, but it doesn't have that weight. It doesn't have that premium feel. When you touch the Galaxy Watch 3, you really feel like it's a premium device, and this is $299, so we're talking about well over $100 difference. So again, $100 difference. You can kind of tell that difference in terms of build quality. But again, I don't think that there's anything wrong with the way the TicWatch 3 is built. I think it's built very nicely. And both of these watches do have a 1.4 inch screen. Although again, I think Samsung takes the winner. Samsung just makes some really nice looking screens. Very, very vibrant, very well detailed in terms of color, color accuracy, etc. So Samsung gets the win for the screen quality. I mean, just take a look at this screen. You can't beat a Samsung screen, even on cell phones. It's just it's just something that they do really, really well. Their AMOLED panels are just super awesome in my opinion. Taking a look at the TicWatch Pro 3, it has a very nice AMOLED panel as well. And it does have some nice color accuracy. It is a nice screen, but if you put it side by side with a Galaxy Watch, both of these watches have really nice screens, but if you put them side by side, nine times out of 10, someone is gonna say that the Galaxy Watch has a better screen. 1.4 inches, both of them. So again, big watches. These are not small watches at all. The TicWatch Pro 3 is a super, super thin watch. Just take a look at how thin this is. And on the wrist, you can see how thin it is as well. Definitely a very thin watch. Now it uses a two layer screen technology, which helps it to save on power, which helps it really to sip on battery. But you do have a nice AMOLED panel on the front here. So you have a color AMOLED panel. And then you also have this LCD monochrome screen that, that kind of turns on when the watch goes to sleep, saving you a lot of power. Now inside, you have the brand new Wear 4100 processor, which gives you an 85% boost than the 3100 did. You also get a lot of minor tweaks and it uses 25% less battery. The battery in the TicWatch Pro 3 is 577 milliamp. That's definitely a huge battery. So you have your speaker, you have your microphone, you can make and take phone calls from your wrist. And it also is running Wear OS, which is a fully baked Google operating system. And it is a very nice operating system if you're deep involved in Google. So Google Maps on your phone will automatically send you turn-by-turn -turn notifications on your watch. You can reply to notifications very easily on this watch as well. It's very easy to navigate through, swiping down, swiping to the right, etc., etc. You also get app support, so you get a lot more app support on the TicWatch Pro 3 running Wear OS than you do on Tizen's platform. 
Now granted, we don't need a whole bunch of apps on our watch, but we do want some apps from time to time. The Galaxy Watch 3, this is running Tizen software, which is Samsung's own software, and it's a very nice operating system. And you also get this rotating bezel, so you don't have to interact with the touchscreen if you don't want to. It's just a great way, if you're wearing gloves or you're working out, you can just rotate and see what you need to see. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I think Tizen is the best wearable OS right now, other than app support, because app support on this is not good at all, other than Google integration, which is pretty much non-existent. So if you start navigation with Google Maps on your phone, it's not gonna send the directions over here like it would on the TicWatch Pro. You also don't get the Google Assistant, you get Waxby, I mean Bixby. She's on here, but she really doesn't know all that much. She doesn't even know who the President of the United States is. I didn't understand that. She doesn't really know all that much, and I've said it from the beginning, and I've said that for years. It's it's no change, it's no different, but I like the Tizen operating system. It's really nice, it's very fluid, no problems with Tizen at all. This does have a 340 milliamp hour battery in here, and it's not as thin as the TicWatch Pro 3, but it also sits pretty flush on the wrist. It's just a little taller, but it also looks really nice on the wrist, so I can't knock them at all. Samsung designed a very nice watch indeed. Both of these watches are covered in Gorilla Glass, although I'm not too sure what Mobvoi is using. I'm waiting to hear back, but Samsung is using the Gorilla Glass DX, and once I hear back from Mobvoi, I'll let you guys know. But in either case, both of them have Gorilla Glass, and again, the bezels kind of protect that screen, so most people will not have any problem. You can see the microphone, and you can see the speaker on the Mobvoi TicWatch Pro 3. Samsung does a little bit better job kind of hiding that microphone and speaker. In terms of battery and battery life, this is where these two watches kind of differ a little bit. Mobvoi has a 577 milliamp hour battery in this super, super thin watch, which is something I give them a lot of credit for. I don't know how they actually stuffed that size battery inside of this small form, but they did, and it's in here, 577 milliamp. And in terms of battery life, now this just got released, so I am getting close to about three days, but that's the battery life with the Mobvoi's TicWatch Pro 3. You're going to get close to three days with this. And now on the... Galaxy Watch 3 here, you have a 340 milliamp hour battery. So even though it is a thicker device, you're getting a smaller battery in here. And in terms of battery life, they say about two days. I'm getting about a day and a half. If I do anything crazy with it, like maybe go for a run or something, I'm gonna charge this up just about every day. So we're gonna say there's about a day difference between these two. There's no real need to stress out about battery life because both of these devices have their own battery saving applications. So if we take a look at Samsung's, you can see that standard is gonna get me about 18 hours. You can put it in power saving, which will give you about two days, and watch only will give you about 18 days. So there's never a worry if you're down to your last 5% and you're trying to make it home, you still wanna be able to tell the time and whatnot. And the same goes for the TicWatch Pro 3. They have their own application here called Essential Mode, and with Essential Mode, it'll just turn off this AMOLED panel and give you that secondary screen. So taking a look at it, you can have it turn on at a specific level, but again, no worries about running out of power, but when you do need to charge it, you need to bring your pogo pin charger from Mobvoi to charge up the TicWatch Pro 3. But on the Galaxy Watch, you can charge it using a Qi charger. Just plop it on a charger and it can charge right away. So charging up the watch on the Galaxy Watch 3, you get that modern convenience of wireless charging. But either way, both of these watches take about two hours to charge, so they're not gonna charge up quickly at all. Now that we've got the internals out of the way, I wanna mention performance. I wanna just mention some quick some quick details about both of these watches in case you really don't know what's going on. Now the Samsung watch is using Samsung's own Tizen software and the Tizen software, I've said it before, is a very nice wearable operating system. I think it's very snappy, it's very fluid. Again, the Exynos chip was designed by Samsung and so is Tizen, so this works very nicely together. I've never had any issues with this watch. It's never stuttered, it's never lagged. It's just a very, very fluid operating system. But where this operating system falls short is with app support. There's hardly any apps for this. And where it also falls short is that the Google integration with Tizen, with the Tizen operating system on this watch, is really all not that good either. So if you're doing navigation on your phone, you're not gonna get any turn-by-turn -turn navigation from your phone onto the watch itself. You gotta use some, some third-party app from Samsung, and that's what they like. They like their Here Maps, and I'm not really a huge fan of Here Maps. I'd prefer, if I use Google Maps on my phone, that it automatically pops up on my wrist. And if you use something like a companion wearable, 
you kind of want your watch to be a little bit helpful. A lot of people like to load up their watches with a whole bunch of applications and you don't need a ton of applications, but you would like the main apps to be there. You would like to have some sort of app support. And I think that's a shame because I really think Samsung and Google should work together to at least make the integration a little bit better. Now I'm sure they're not going to. Samsung is trying to push their own system. Samsung is trying to just keep, keep it within the family when it comes to Samsung devices. And I don't think that's right. I think the consumer should win. And right now the consumer is losing because Google integration is definitely not here. And again, that's a huge shame. But in terms of Tizen, I have no problems with Tizen. It's very fluid. It's very easy, very intuitive to kind of figure out your way, figure out all the settings and whatnot. In terms of the TicWatch Pro 3, the Wear 4100 in here definitely is a huge improvement when it comes to the overall fluidity of the watch and the one gigabyte of RAM definitely helps. But I think Tizen has a leg up when it comes to the operating system on a wearable. Tizen's operating system just is a little bit more fluid. I think Samsung's spending more time than Google on, on improving their wearable OS. Now Google is committed to kind of keeping Wear OS alive and I think they're trying. They need to devote more developers to the Wear OS platform. But again, this is Wear OS, so it is very intuitive as well. If you've ever ever picked up a phone, you kind of know where to go through. You can easily navigate once again to kind of figure out what settings you need to change. It's very simple. Again, these are wearable OSs. They're not meant to be complex. But what I like about the Wear OS platform, of course, is the Google integration. So you have your Google feed right over here. You also get access to the Google Assistant, which I'll do a fun little comparison between Bixby and the Google Assistant, which I do on every video of mine. Because, well, Bixby is just... She, she just woke up, but she's not really that good. She's still sleeping. But again, the Google integration is something that I really like on Wear OS, and that's what keeps me coming back to the Wear OS platform. I like the fact that if I do navigation on my phone, it'll just pop up here and give me the turn-by-turn -turn navigation. And again, the Google Assistant on your wrist is something that you really can't beat. This is something that really makes this a very useful device. There's some similarities between both of these watches. Getting notifications and replying to those notifications from just about every app now, not a problem at all. You can, you can reply to notifications directly from your wrist. You can also dictate, although again, the Google Assistant is a lot better at dictation than Bixby. Bixby really doesn't do all that great when it comes to voice dictations. Google really is ahead of the game when it comes to voice dictation. You can also just type a reply on both of these devices. You can get voice calls on both of these watches as well. So you can, while tethered to your device, you can go ahead and answer those calls on your wrist. But one thing that I like about the Samsung Tizen software, and I'm hoping Wear OS will enable it or Mobvoi will enable it on their own, when you get a notification, I like the way that Samsung does it. You get a little chime and a vibration. I like hearing that chime because you don't always hear a vibration. On Wear OS, on the TicWatch Pro 3, you just get a vibration. Now, I wish they'd enable that speaker for, for notifications as well. I do like hearing the chime a little bit better than a vibration. And when it comes to vibration, Samsung's watch is just a little bit better, a little bit stronger than the TicWatch Pro 3. When you get a phone call, you can either rotate the bezel to accept or decline, or you can send one of those predefined messages. So I, I like the ringtone, I like the speaker. Now let me call my other watch, and both of these are on high volume. So let me show you an example of the Mobvoi TicWatch Pro 3. You can do the same thing, although you don't have the bezel, so you can just accept, decline, or send a quick message. But again, I like the way that Samsung gives you a little chime when you get a, when you get a notification. So you get a nice little chime, and you can also... You can also reply with some predefined little messages, some quick chat replies if you want to. Send an emoji. I like the Tizen way of notifications. Again, it's just very simple to go ahead and interact with notifications. They don't do a great job when you get a ton of notifications. I think they could do a little bit better. So as you noticed, I did not get any chime on the TicWatch Pro 3, but I do get a little dot on the bottom in case I miss that slight vibration, letting me know that I do have a notification. And you can swipe up and you see your notifications right there and you can reply with some quick replies right at the bottom or you can just go ahead and reply using your voice again or you can just 
use a little keyboard if you want to do that as well. Both of these handle them a little bit differently. Again, I'm hoping they enable the speaker for notifications. I think that'd be a lot better. I, I, I like hearing a chime. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. But a chime is definitely a nicer way to get a notification alert than a little vibration that you might miss. But in terms of health tracking, I'm a little upset with Samsung. And let me just tell you why. This is not a cheap watch at all. At $429 when I first bought it, I was expecting it to have the ECG ready. I was expecting it to be a fully, fully baked product. But instead, it was kind of half baked. And they only gave us the blood oxygen saturation monitoring. They did not give us ECG. And ECG is still not available. A lot of you might say they just released it, it just came out. I already got that update and I'm going to show you why I'm upset with Samsung. I'm upset with Samsung because, well, the ECG only works when you pair a Galaxy phone with a Galaxy watch. If you don't have a Samsung Galaxy phone, ECG is not going to be available and I think that's something wrong. I think that's not something that Samsung should be doing. Again, not everyone has a Samsung phone. And to show you what I mean, that they added the new ECG yesterday. I did get the update and I was waiting for this update before, before I did this video. But again, I am upset. I do not think that's right. It's only available on Galaxy smartphones with Android 7 or later. Why couldn't they have enabled this feature on regular Android phones? I'm not a Samsung phone fan anymore. So for me and a lot of people who do not have Samsung phones, we're kind of missing out on this ECG feature. I don't see any reason why it has to be a Samsung exclusive other than Samsung being greedy, but that's just my take on it. That's just what I'm thinking. So as of right now, both of these watches do the same thing and they monitor your blood oxygen saturation and that's about it. No ECG on this. It might change by the time you watch this video. It's Samsung might change their mind or who knows what the hell Samsung's gonna do. But as of right now, I think that's a bummer. I think that's not right of Samsung to do. But in terms of overall health monitoring, in terms of the heart rate monitor, both of these do very well in terms of heart rate monitoring. Both of these monitor your heart rate pretty accurately and both of them do pretty good with the blood oxygen saturation monitoring. Both of these watches can also track your sleep. Again, they're pretty much on par when it comes to health tracking. Now that the ECG is not available on non-Samsung phones, they also have stress monitoring. They have a lot of AI coaches in here. They have a lot of AI tricks to kind of help you get moving if you've been sitting too long and just, you know, the basic things that all these smartwatches do now. They try and push you to, to really achieve your goals if that's what you want this watch to do. But I think Samsung edges out in terms of the overall, in terms of the overall health market because what you can do with the Samsung health application is you can actually have some little competitions with some friends if you want to do that. We're all in this social ecosystem together. We're all in this social experiment, if you will. And what I like about Samsung is you can join weekly activities or daily activities. You can also have some challenges with your friends as well. So I think Samsung does a good job with that social aspect. I wish Google Fit would do that. I wish Google Fit would be a little bit better when it comes to the social aspect of wearing one of these wearables. But well, that's just my opinion on the social aspect of the health tracking abilities of both of these watches. Let me know down in the comments below if that kind of helps you. I think Fitbit kind of started that trend and that's why a lot of people bought Fitbits. So I like the social aspect of the Samsung watch and I think, I think Google could implement that very, very easily. But let me know down in the comments below if watching Sally's walking more than you is going to motivate you to walk a little bit more. Let me know down in the comments below. Finally, let's just talk about activity tracking, guys. Now the Samsung watch they say can track about 40 different 40 different activities and the TicWatch Pro 3 using Mobvoi's own tick exercise application can track about 10 but of course you can install Google Fit and get access to about 70 different 70 different exercises that you can track but if you want to fully utilize the tick tick coach that's going to help you with your activities you want to use Mobvoi's own tick exercise and Samsung can also automatically start a workout so if you forget to start it it'll automatically start it for you but what I like about Samsung is they're really fast when it comes to locking on the GPS signals. It's one of the fastest in the business. I don't know how they're doing it, but this seriously locks on super, super fast. One thing I don't appreciate, one thing I don't like is that you can't really wait for the GPS signal to lock on before you start your exercise. Maybe it's, it's something I'm missing in the settings. Let me know down in the comments below, but it'll start your exercise right away, even while it's still trying to find GPS. If you don't have your phone with you and you're relying solely on the watch and not on your phone, this could be a little bit of an issue. But again, it does a decent job. It does an okay job. Now, the ride, the ride that I went on this morning, you get a little map. You get to see get to see your heart rate. You can see your elevation. You can see a whole bunch of different graphs here if you wanted to. And then you see your zones down at the bottom. You see your pace. And then you see your workout details right at the bottom over here. And 
you can export it if you want to a GPX file or you can add it to a root. Again, they do a nice job. They do a decent job for sure. And you get some medals. Again, social aspect, kind of motivating you to do more. Now the TicWatch Pro 3 has a brand new heart rate sensor on the back and they do a really nice job as well. Taking a look at both of these together, again, I think Samsung gives us a little bit more information. They give us a little bit more details about our workout. And also what's new this year, you get your VO2 Max with the Galaxy Watch 3. But if we take a look at the heart rate information, you'll see it's just about the same. 153 on the Tick Watch, 155 average on the Galaxy Watch. You can also see the max at 172 for the Tick Watch and 174 for the Galaxy Watch. Again, I have no issues with either one of these heart rate sensors. They actually do a really good job. Everything about the Tick Watch Pro is really nice. I'm hoping maybe they give us a little bit more detailed information. But again, both of these watches are smart watches first. They are not fitness watches. So the more information they give us, I think, is just a bonus. Just a little fun that I always do because I like poking fun at Bixby. She really needs to get better. What's the weather? It is fair and 77 degrees right now. City, it's 77 degrees and mostly cloudy. Today, it'll be partly cloudy with a forecasted high of 79 and a low of 66. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's 77. Who's the president of the United States? There aren't any navigation capsules available. Where's the closest Starbucks? Available. Directions to Macy's Herald Square. There aren't any navigation capsules available. West 48th Street and 7th Avenue, and will take about 12 minutes in heavy traffic. What's the tallest building in New York City? There aren't any navigation capsules available. Buildings in New York City include One World Trade Center at 541.3 meters. The one Vanderbilt at 427 meters and eight others. So that's basically it, guys. When it comes to these two watches, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I think they're both excellent looking watches, excellent in their own design, excellent in their own right. One is running the Tizen software. Again, Samsung's trying to push everyone to use their own products, such as a Galaxy phone to get this ECG to work. Boo on you, Samsung. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right. The Wear OS platform will work with any Android device exactly as it should, exactly as it's designed to, so you don't have any limitation not using a Samsung phone. And both of these, both of these can be paired up to an iPhone, but again, you're not going to get the great functionality that you will when pairing them up to an Android phone. And the only limitation with the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3, again, not having this connected to a Samsung phone, is losing that ECG feature. For my usage, for what I've been testing, everything else is exactly the same on the Tizen watch if you're using an Android or using a Samsung phone. But it really just it really just comes down to preference. It really just comes down to what you need. I personally like having, having a very useful assistant on my wrist. I like having access to my Google feed. I like having access to, say, Google Maps. I just like the overall overall ease and overall integration with Google products with a Wear OS device. Again, this is Google's own product. Android is Google's product. Samsung's doing the same thing with their Tizen software, pairing it better with a Samsung phone. Everyone's just trying to tie you in, lock you into their ecosystems. But that's basically it, guys. Let me know what you think about these two watches down in the comments below. For me, both of them are awesome devices. You can't go wrong with either one. If you have any questions about either one, let me know down in the comments below as well. We can continue this discussion down there, but I really appreciate you guys watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, catch you guys next time. And if we go to speed, the max speed was 21. I didn't understand that. Bixby, you're a pain.